and we're about to go to the cave where Torsten lives. Um, or are we? But yeah, but before we do that, the uh, what do you guys want to do? Are we you heading straight there? You're gonna take a break before you go there? You're just gonna not go there? You go to the village? What are you gonna do? I gotta I do my ten minute recovery roll. Okay. Yeah, I guess we're gonna kind of discuss. So maybe I'll do that as well. Yeah. Um, okay. We probably should fulfill the contract before we start going out. I think the the primary objective I think was to get the cargo to the village and then secondary was to find you know the reason what was behind all this so I think we should go to the village and drop this guy off With the and cargo. then yeah and then go to in search of the cave it's me. It's me. I said I'll say uh no, man, you got my blood pumping, and now you're making me go take a long, boring walk back to a village? Just let this guy go, and, you know, let's go to the cave. What are we losing? And by guy, I mean the driver. <laughs> let the driver go? Um, take yeah, the wagon by himself? All right. Yeah, we got, yeah. The, we got the danger. Let's go... To the cave and meet this Torsten fellow and discuss this uh, misunderstanding we have with him. <laughs> That's a fair point. We could let the cart the, the cart go with the, the one driver. Yeah, you guys had, just as a side note, you had spent one day, camped, rode half of the day, got attacked. There's probably only half a day left for him to get to the village. How far, do we have a sense of how far the cave is? No, you don't have a sense of that at the moment. Unless you ask your prisoner. I oh, say, oi, prisoner. fellow. <laughs> oi, fellow. How far away is this cave to this Torsen guy? Oh, it's just over the hill. Um, you know, probably a 20-minute walk. I say, see? It's a short <laughs> walk. We'll go talk to this guy. And, you know, we'll be done for the day. Go have our free drinks. It'll be great. Can I... Does he sound like he's telling the truth? You can make a roll. I would like to. Go ahead. Give me a D20. I have no reason to think he's lying, but I don't want to be walking yep. into a Give trap. Give me a 1D20 roll. 1D20 roll. Yeah, you you clearly can tell he is not able to deceive you. And even if he tried, you would know right away. Okay, I figured as much. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a suggestion. Sure. Since we have four dead bodies and there's four of us, that maybe these guys were going to get relieved at some time and we could probably take out some of the guys out here before we go into the cave and fight all of them. I'm hmm. going to kill this guy. I say in a stage whisper. <laughs> After we gave him some Slim Jims? <laughs> and we bandaged him. <laughs> I thought. I think yeah. if we dressed up like the uh, bandits, we could wait here till the the new bandits come out and kill them without them knowing we're here. And then we then Torsten won't have so many uh, guards with him. Um. <clears> hmm. <throat> so we're not going towards a diplomatic. Uh, Discussion the lie with this guy. You don't seem I, horribly I, diplomatic. Oh, I'm guessing you. No, that's why. That's what I'm saying. Can I just threaten to murder this guy to last kill this guy? Because that's what you're suggesting that I kill this guy. And I'm totally happy to do that. I'm just wondering if there we can use him <clears throat> to to kind of sneak up on the cave so that we don't get caught on the way. That works too. Because there's, we're, we're not like going to walk in in a diplomatic fashion to this guy, but at least we can get to the cave. I, I don't know. know. Maybe Ciela named her other sword diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be copyright, man. <laughs> and Fred. And, and I, I look at Ciela and I, by the way, Jim? 
Jim, God, do you not remember that guy we killed? That like super badass guy that I got the killing blow with with Jim? Yes. Come on, guys, you can't. Even I'm smarter than that. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's so my he... badass oh, kill. Okay. It's my trophy, man. I kind of turn the turn the guy around and I'm like, "What's your name, dude?" Please, Jim. Uh, Victor. Victor. Why don't you just name your sword Victor? I could do that. What do you think, Victor? Should I name my sword Victor? He uh, tries to move away from you as much as he can. He doesn't really answer. <laughs> I take a small step towards him while holding it up. He definitely tries to move away if he can. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So I, I sound bored <clears throat> and in, a little impatient. And I say, yeah, you um, do. All right. No, when, when, <laughs> when, uh, when do you guys get relieved? Well, we we don't get relieved. We've never not completed our mission. I mean, there's no relieving. We're here to do that, and then we go back. Oh, I could and, relieve you right now if you want. And again, I, I he tries to step awe. away from her. I feign <laughs> awe, and I said, "Man, you guys are good." Well, yeah, we've never failed so far. We've we've stopped all these shipments. Hey, um, I take I take a cough on the side and suggest that he just find out how they know the shipments are coming. I think that's a good idea. <clears throat> I'm still up him? in this guy's face. You want to go ask him? Not me. I just I did, I just uh, creep him out. I... Yeah, I'll ask him. Okay. So I ask him how they know that the shipments are coming. He gets real jittery, real. He does not want to answer that question. You can see he knows, but he does not want to answer that. I give him a squeeze where the wound is. And yeah, he yells out um, and he's trying to keep his mouth clenched. He, is, he does not want to give that answer up. I bring up my sword. I bring up Jim. And I start like almost caressing his face with uh with the side of the blade, not quite cutting him, but if he moved, it would leave a nice slash across his cheek. He's yeah, he's he's like, you can ask Torsten because he'll kill me if he finds out I said anything like that. So you go and ask Torsten. I don't think you'll make it that far. So, can we maybe suggest to him? Um, uh, how to do this in character so what I'm thinking is maybe we give him an out like take away all of his, his armor and weapons and sit him in the cart and tell him that he can go with the, with the driver to the village free if he tells us uh, he, he's thinks about that. And then he's like, no, Torsten will kill me. There's, I'm not saying anything. And he just clams up. And I start laughing. Uh, and I'm like, that's hilarious, man. You think Torsten's going to survive? Ah, oh, good one, man. Good one. While still caressing his cheek with the blade. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he's like, well, if you can kill Torsten, then then we'll see if that actually happens. And he's just going to be clammed up. He's not going to give up anything else. Hmm. Are his arms tied up? Uh, no, I don't think anybody's tied him up. Well, so when when, just... when I did the lot the the whip, I was kind of meaning to tie his arms to his sides. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wasn't yeah, he's tied up. The neck. Okay. So his arms are tied at his side, so like stiff board, like planking style? Sure, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you can probably move the bottom part of his arms. So I uh, <laughs> I, uh, I retract my forearm blade, or I guess it's already retracted. It's been a while. And I start caressing his like upper arm, uh, <laughs> and I slowly start going down and down his arm until I get to his hand. And then I just start circling 
the back of his hand and then I start getting closer to his finger and then I get to his forearm finger or his four uh forefinger his pointer finger and I grab it in between two of my fingers and I just like I'm slightly massaging it and uh does he have any reaction to this yeah he passes out he faints oh, God damn it. <laughs> that happens That's all the time <laughs> I sigh and I sheathe Jim and I just go and sit on the stupid wagon and eat some Slim Jim. Everyone's eating my Slim Jims. <laughs> All right. I, I kind of just leave the guy crumpled on the ground and I walk back to, to see how the driver's doing. And as I do that, I pass by Ciel and say, you have a way with men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the driver is... He's anxious to to get going. He doesn't want to be here for any more trouble. So he's like, what are we doing? Are we going or what's happening here? Let's, let's put the guy in the box and uh, go find tours. Yeah, I agree. Let the guy go. Just take, but take his, uh, his armor and weapons away and just leave him kind of tied up in the box. Okay. All right. Um... And if then, I break his finger, do you think he'll wake up? Probably. Sure. I really wanted to break his finger. No, it's fine. <laughs> Put him in the stupid box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys move your guys back to the wagon so I can see them. And I'm going to get rid of these guys. So he's so tied up securely enough, though, that he's not going to be able to get out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you tie him up. All right. These are the dead guys, right? Okay. Um, all right. So uh, everybody took their 10 minute also that wanted to. Mm -hmm. And we're going to head straight there, correct? Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to walk a little ways. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab our people. And I'm kind of, uh, I'm going to go kind of stealth mode. Is the driver going on or is the driver staying here and waiting for you? The driver is going on to the village. All right, I want to move you guys just a second so I can move you to another map. I think so that's what you read on, right? He's going to head off. Okay. So let's grab you guys and do a copy. And move. And we you. tell the driver, or I tell the driver that tell the the village that this is a bloke who's been stopping all their shipments lately, who's been stopping their food coming in. Right. Right. Okay. Oh, we screwed that up. I think that went perfectly fine. We put the guy in the box with the bracelet. <laughs> oh, well. He's not going to wake up. <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh, I'll move happens. you guys here just to say I missed somebody. Who did I miss? Uh, it seemed like I didn't get... Which I bracelet four, was that? There's four there. It's a it's just one of the guys. There's Are you kidding there. me? Yeah. We had put the teleport bracelet on the dude? No, oh, no, that's right. We put in the box. box. Well, we, I mean, we would have taken everything out of the box that we needed, right? Oh, that guy's happily munching on Slim Jims all the way back to the village. <laughs> well, he's tied up. He's probably not going to be able to do too much. Yeah, but we, we would have taken that out when we put him in. All right, so let me move I mean, the character. Is that a safe assumption? Sure. Yeah, yeah I mean, okay. you, nothing's happened yet. You guys can... Okay. Somebody's got to carry it, though. It's a bracelet, right? Oh. Uh... But you can give it as a cipher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be in the wagon in a different box. There's a million boxes in the... Or not a million, but there's a lot is of boxes. The, is the carrying, like, a physically touching you? Or is it going to be in a sack or something? If it's on or your per, it anywhere proximity? near your person, yeah. Okay, it's a proximity thing. Yeah, so yeah. what's what's the, the, the negative effect? That's a great question. I believe you start to lose... Um, it's still sort of cool sad effects. The longer you have it, and again, it compounds the longer you have it. Uh, let me see here. Let me look for cipher limit. Because I've not done that yet. Uh, not that one. Okay. 
different area. Is it a, a like a so the time each, frame daily? So each character has a limit on the number of ciphers they can carry at any given time. The idea is that ciphers can be dangerous when gathered together, and that's the other thing is that they you're gathering a lot of energy together, and they might adversely affect the other ciphers that you have. Um, most ciphers are inherently unstable, and so when you're gathering them together, so basically, I roll on a chart to see what happens. How often? As you carry them, probably... and I'm looking. Uh, okay. There's more of a gameplay mechanism than setting up. Very basic. Uh -huh. So I guess when you go to put them together, I'm going to make a roll when you go to put them together. So the roll on the table each it, day. It's each day that the ciphers are gathered together. So I'm wondering maybe if we do like a Lord of the Rings and just kind of each one of us carry it every day. I think this is our last day. So you want to carry this for the first one? Well, one of my ciphers is a gas bomb, so I don't know if I should be the one carrying it. <laughs> I, have, I have detonation beads. <laughs> Those are the worst kind of beads. Yeah. <laughs> Um, As we're arguing rolls. about this, I just look at my artifact and I, uh, and I'm watching it as it changes symbols. What That's sort? All. What sort of? Um, has the the driver already left? Uh, not not if you don't want him to. Okay, I have an artifact that creates one sheet of new paper each day uh that's an oddity or, or an oddity yeah okay. so the ciphers are the ones that are under the cipher list so that's the only ones we're talking about the oddities you can have any number of those yeah so i i, I have that oh gotcha so okay. I, I was yeah i wanted to create a sheet of paper and just kind of write a <clears throat> a note back to Hagercraft and just kind of explain things okay and give that to the driver yeah <clears throat> perfect <clears throat> um, for the ciphers, what what kind of roll is it that you make? Uh, percentage roll. Mm, it's right around 50-50-ish. <laughs> Good oh. or bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. And it goes from, you know, maybe a little bad to catastrophically bad. You may have one they just don't want. Probably any of them, because you guys haven't used any of them yet. <laughs> um, While he's rolling, I look around at the guys, and I see if they have any cool uh, uh, mechanical metal stuff that uh, could be an upgrade to me. Um, yeah, these guys seem pretty low-rate bandits, and so you do rummage through them. And you you look at their gear and you're you're sure that your gear is better. Mm. Okay. With the ciphers. I think one of the guys and I sit down. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll attach the density nodule that I have to my whip. That'll free up a slot. I'll just carry it. Well, before you do that, is the so with the ciphers you can carry two. Is using one of them an action? So you can only use one per turn. Right. <clears throat> Crap. But that density nodule will last 28 hours. So, I mean, it's going to last to the end of this. Sure. Mission. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or at right. least the next fight. <laughs> I'm going to... I'll, I'll, I'll hang on to the, the teleport thing. Um, I'll drop my attractor. Okay. Like, just put it in the wagon or what? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What in fact, it? I'll I'll wrap it. I'll wrap the paper around it, and 
or attach the paper to it and also add a note please take care of this for me sure yeah <laughs> that makes sense there's the text for you <laughs> sweet it ha and the only other piece to that is it's, it has to be a spot that you can see yep so all right <clears throat> so you guys should be on the new map you're at the mouth of a cave um, and this is the first time that we get to see one of the features. It's called the Fog of War feature. So, um, one of the things that we can do in Roll20 is I can, as you guys move through the cave, I can open up using the Fog of War, um, so you can only see what your character would see on the map, even oh, though cool. I can see the whole map. Unless you guys can see the whole map. <laughs> no. No, it's like working. It's... Cool, cool. Seven by five. All right. Yeah. Uh, you guys can decide what order you're walking in, and you guys can tell me what you're doing. You see nothing at the mouth of the cave. So since I have stealth, um, maybe I should move ahead, like maybe 10 or 15 feet from everybody. It Does the sound dampener help my stealth out? It's a cipher I have. Yeah. Yep. So I guess I activate that and I go with Quiggly. Do I have to roll for that? Um, yeah. So you guys are going to try to sneak through the cave? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what is the other people going to do while you're sneaking through the cave? What? Stay about 10 feet behind them or 15 feet? Sounds good. Alright. Um, so go ahead and finish. yeah, we'll make a um, go ahead and make me a 1d20 roll up for those that are stealthing up in front. No pressure. <laughs> uh, do I get a I, anything for I, the sound dampener? Uh, yep. Yep. I'm going to take that into account. Yep. And do right, I get to use my skill? <laughs> Yes. Yep. Okay, and I'm trained in it. Particular set of skills. Stealth skill. Stealth tasks. Yeah. Yep. So go ahead and roll a one d twenty, and I'll add a bonus to it. Okay. Yeah, you both are fine. And um, how far up would you like to go? Um, I'd say quick bit little lead. I would say we're probably going about. I don't know. We're going pretty slow, obviously, so maybe like okay. 15, 20 feet at a time. All right, so you see this, and you see darkness beyond so far. Okay, so we're kind of... And, and as you get away from the mouth of the cave, you're going to see that the limb start, the, the light starts to dim, but you, um, and you're sneaking along. Okay. And actually, I'll give you a little bit more give you uh, this piece right here and so far you don't see anything it's just a it's stone cave wall um, it's definitely natural it doesn't look like it's been carved out it looks like they're just using something that was already here do we hear anything uh, make a roll nice I nice. have listening with training okay make, make some rolls Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um, I hear everything. Yeah. <laughs> Off in this direction... Let's see if I can ping that. Can I ping it? Excuse me. <laughs> um, okay, so as you can see, it looks like uh, the, the thing continues, and you are hearing um, a person's voice talking, and okay. you hear it from... You think there's a couple different directions, so you think that there's probably maybe two groups, although you don't know how many were in within the group that are in the cave. One that's down one way and one that's down another, the way it's echoing off, because you got such a good roll. Do they sound far away or pretty close? Um, They sound a little distant so far. You don't feel like they're they're very close they're at the ahead. moment. Yeah. Okay. 
three. I tell quickly this. Okay. Okay. So, not very far ahead would be beyond what we see. Yeah, they definitely are further on in the cave. In fact, um, from well, from that point, that's about as much as you can see. The way the walls are blocking you, but you definitely hear they don't. It doesn't sound like they're just. They they sound like they're deeper in the cave. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to scooch forward around the left side here. And I'll go that gonna way. going to hide kind of up here. Okay. Um, and that's going to open up this. And you still don't see anything yet. Okay. Is this all one level? It's all... Yeah, it's all pretty pretty uh, level as far as it's not going up or down. It doesn't seem like it seems like it's all on the same level. Okay. I give right. quickly the signal to go ahead. And you definitely think that there's a group that's, you know, up to the left, and maybe there's a group down to the right. The way you're hearing, just talk, and it's not like loud. It's it's just probably conversation, but it's echoing within the in the cave. Does it sound like a lot of them or just a few of them? Still can't tell the number. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a lot. It's not like a crowd of, you know, 50 people talking. It's it's only a few. Both groups? Yeah. Okay. I give quickly the sign, but I think we're still good for a little bit. All right. I'm going to stealth over to here. Okay. I back him up. That would probably give you this and I'll give you a little bit more of this but you still don't see anything it still seems like there's maybe a group to the left and maybe a group to the right okay right. Um, okay so just gonna kind of peek around the corner here not that far <laughs> well, like, yeah, you're stealth. I mean, it's wow. like, like, right there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, wow. That's um, looking down that corner, um, you can actually let's see. We'll give you this. And I would like to use perception. We'll give you that much. All right. So, w which would I use? Like searching, listening, or perception? I guess searching is like I'm, if I'm looking for something. Searching would be like if in the room you're standing in, you're looking for something within that room. Um, okay. listening is just standing quiet and trying to listen and for you it could be you know whether it's echoing through a cave and trying to figure out where things are it could be in a woods you're trying to listen to somebody following you or you're trying to overhear a conversation or whatever what if i'm looking for traps um that'd be more like a perception check okay all right so i do want to use perception to see if i can determine if if there's anybody around Okay, so Most, your, mostly to the right, I guess, because that's more what I can see. Yeah, well, you, there. Okay, so there's definitely nobody hiding in the area that you can see. It's just that you haven't got out, peeked out far enough yet to see any further down into the cave. There's some light coming from that way, that direction, but you don't see anybody yet, and you think okay. that the the talking is still just off a tiny bit. All right, so then I will kind of stealth up here and kind of peek around the corner yeah that'll give you a, uh probably this and so you see a guy down here um yeah he's on the token layer yep there we go so yeah you see a guy down here and he's kind of near the the some cargo and uh, that's what you see so far. He's just kind of hanging out near the cargo. All right. Do I have the ability to kind of poke my head around here and see if there's anything up to the left without that guy down there seeing me? Or would he see me if I did that? Um, no, he's not facing you, so you don't think you don't think right. he would see you. So I'm going to... Over here and be okay. Uh, I'm going to quickly just peek around the corner here just to see what I can see and then dart back. Okay. Um, this is what you see when you look around the corner. Uh, let me grab this and so you see two guys that are over here talking um, and you see more cargo. Okay. So this wall here is obstructing view. 
Uh, yeah, pretty much. When you made your little peek, you know, yeah. I mean, you guys can, you're seeing most of this now. Okay. <clears throat> I asked quickly, hey, what do you see? I see down to our right, there is a single guy. I don't know how far the cave extends, but there's, I'm, I'm assuming this is like, like, uh, like this stuff here is like crates and stuff, supplies. Yeah, all of, all of these extra things are crates, supplies. It looks like maybe maybe the stuff that they had stolen. Okay. Do. All right. So um, to the right, down that way, we have there's one guy I can see. Looks like a, a bunch of supplies that they've stolen. To the left. There's a supply drop, and um, I can hear voices beyond that. It sounds like there's more than one. Oh, is there thought. two guys down in the? Uh, to the, the left. Right? I'm not to the right. I only see one. Oh, there's to two the now. No, I'm I'm actually trying to do something there. I'm, for some reason, I can't click on that token, and I tried to add another one in it. But there's only one guy down to the right. There's, there's two guy? to the okay. left. Oh, okay. I'm trying to fix that on my side. Two to the right, one to two. Uh, sorry. <laughs> one to the right, two to the left? Yes, one to the right, okay. and I'll get rid of the other one. Yep, yep. Okay. There you go. And I asked quickly if it's bright um... in either direction. Like, there's more bright cave in either direction. Can I tell? Um, yeah, there's definitely more light coming from the southern area. You think you see all the lighting that is for the top area. And nobody's noticed you yet. Okay. So there's more lights down to the, the right, but I don't know how far the cave system goes. Um, it sounds more closed in to the left, but I hear more voices. Just guessing there's more cave right about here. And then you do notice this guy walks this way. Right. He, he doesn't, and he, he kind of moves out of the way, and he you don't, he doesn't see you, but he moves and towards where the voices were. Okay. All right. I think it sounds more open down to the right, so I'm wondering maybe if we go to the left, because if we do go to the right and there's more cave, I don't want the guys that are to the left coming behind us. Makes sense. Let's drop them. Yeah. Do we have any? Do any of us have some sort of like ambushing skill? Like, if can we manipulate the terrain in any way to like fuck them up? I can push one. <laughs> you can push one. Does the stealth tasks? Does that give me like initiative? Um, right now, because they haven't noticed you guys, um, you'd be able to sneak up on them, which would probably give you one action, and then we would roll for initiative, unless. <sighs> they somehow notice you and then you wouldn't get the sneak and we would just roll regular initiative at that point. But right now, since they haven't noticed you, that's why we haven't rolled initiative yet. Okay. And the guy to our right has just, is that our right? Yeah. Has our left off to see what the other and, guys are doing. Yeah. And just to remind, uh, I think Ciala has a cipher that's belt mounted. Did you read what that did? The sound dampener? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used that when I came inside. Oh, okay. So what oh, is, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so that's why they're not hearing you guys at all. She has mm -hmm. on her she belt, has she has a, a device that's doing sound dampening. How long is that for? All last of us? for? Um, hers didn't list it, so I'm going to give it a an hour. I'm just going to throw something out there because they didn't list it. So for right. an hour, it's going to dampen sound. And it's not going to completely stop it, but it's definitely going to bring it down. And that's for all of us? For everybody that stands near you. Place. Yeah, it's everybody that's right around you. All right. So I tell Quigley about this cipher, and I tell him, let's go to the guys to the left while I have this volatile thing on. Yeah, you're pretty sure, like, if you get shot. right up on them, and then even though there's sword fighting going on, you're pretty sure that the people in the cave wouldn't even hear it because your dampener is going to dampen it enough that 
it would just be muffled sounds. It wouldn't sound like, you know, a full on fight. All right. So I am going to um, just kind of whisper to them. I'm going to scoot around to the left and distract them. And when I wave you forward, you know, rush them and take them out. Okay. All right. I was for okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to run back kind of in here, like kind of right there. Like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use hedge magic. And I'm going to grab a stone or a pebble or something and drop it there. Okay. Um, so they hear that sound and they kind of like, huh? And they turn and they're like, did you hear that? And he's like, yeah, I thought I heard something. All right. And I, I wave everybody on. Can we call it a whisper? Have her start shooting everybody up. Yeah. So you guys are gonna get a free round to do whatever you want before we even do initiative. So you get one now, free does that use action. Does that use my round or can I do an attack? No, nope, we're saying right now we get one free action right now. All right. So I'm going to, does that include run in an action? Yeah, or maybe, is that? Yep, you can move okay. and do something. All right, so I'm going to pop out, I guess here, and take out this dude. All right. Hey, I'll try I'm gonna, to. I'm gonna go high low on that attack. Okay, so you're gonna run in and you're gonna do the melee attack. He's gonna do the ranged one. Unless uh, Cilia wants to. Yeah, totally. I'll okay. wait for him to attack and then go. So, yeah, he starts at a three, but he's he doesn't really know you guys are there. So I'm going to drop that to a two. And if the ranged attack and a melee attack hits that guy, he's going to have a hard time. It's going to jostle him enough that he'll have a hard time hitting somebody back. All right. So what am I rolling? Uh, so right now it's a difficulty two, unless you're going to do something to no. adjust it. Okay. Mm. Oh, God. All right, so that's okay. Uh, uh, one crossbow bolt flies in um, and misses. And I run, run in right after that crossbow. Okay. Uh, taking out both my um, forearm blade and Jim. Yes, okay. And I go straight for the guy in front of me. All right. Two attacks. Or you know what? No. I want to do... Can I do this? Uh, you'll let me know if I can do this. Can I forearm blade the guy in front of me? And then uh, as forearm blade him as I'm jumping on him to attack the guy next to him? Uh, or would I can that be that, like but I'll too many give you, I'll make your difficulty a little tougher to hit. But you could for, do it. For both of them? Because I have skills. I'm skilled yeah. in No, jumping. the first one will be normal. But the, okay. the second one to, to try to that maneuver, I'm going to make it a little tougher for you to make that a success. Not that it would be impossible, but you could do it. All right. Would my skill in jumping lower that at all? Or yep. is it already lowered? Yep. yep, it would lower it. Yep, all skills would still count. All right, so my so first, first attack one... would be a d difficult two unless you're going to add anything to it. Um. No, it's just gonna be a regular attack. Let's All right, do. Let's do oh, it. Yeah, yeah, because thrust wouldn't really make sense. So difficulty two. Mhm. Mm ah. Uh, rolling dice. Rolling dice. Rolling dice. Nine. Perfect. So first one hits for four point. Is it a light weapon or a medium weapon that you're using? That's my light weapon. That's the light weapon. So that does two to him. Mm -hmm. Um. And so, I use that momentum to uh, attack with Jim on the other guy. Yeah, so he will guy. be a difficulty three, but you're going to use your jump, so I'll make that a difficulty two for With that my one. medium weapon? Mm-hmm. 16. Yes. All right. All right. And, that one, All right. and that one was with the thrust, by the way. Okay, so you get an extra point. Is it a light weapon or a medium weapon is Jim? That one's a medium weapon. So that's four points plus one is five points. Nice. So five weapon, five on that guy and three on the, two on the other guy. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the first guy, I mean, you, you damage him, and uh, you, you, you put a wound on him, and he's he's shocked about it. The second guy, the wound is serious. I mean, he doesn't go down, but he is certainly hurting. And um, the other other guys can go. If I attack the guy right here. Okay. Um, so would that be a one, two, three, since all three of us attacked him? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. And I, I did put that, uh, that device on my whip. So. Oh, yeah, and it makes it... Two more points of damage. Right, okay. Yeah, it makes the end of the whip heavier than normal, and so it hits with more damage than it normally <clears throat> would. Yeah. Yep. So is it a simple or a standard? Uh, simple, yeah. He's still at a difficulty two. They're normally a three, but you guys have surprised him, so I'm giving you a difficulty two at this point. And it's a light weapon, so it goes down to difficulty one. Okay. Unless you're going to add anything else that would just oh make it an automatic. Oh, oh, dang. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's horrible. Okay, and our last Chuffington... Take this off. Oh, this he's just going off. right up. <laughs> Which is the guy that's like almost dead? This guy? Yes. Um, I want to. You're gonna kill steel, aren't you? Can I just say that icon looks like the Stanford tree? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are it's usually my... bad status effects. So I don't know if you guys want to put them on yourselves, but. Oh, I thought that was stealthy. <laughs> well, I guess, yeah, that could be stealthy. Want to use Onslaught on this fella? Pikachu him. Okay, is this the standard, or are you going to do something different with this Onslaught? Uh, I uh, pull out from my pocket a Pikachu, revealing <laughs> the source of my powers. <laughs> 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 All right, so it's a uh, difficulty two to hit him with the lightning attack. All right, let's do this. You nail him. Success. So that's four <clears throat> points of damage. It's going to go through his armor because it's lightning. He is really, 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 really hurt, but he has managed to still stand. This guy? Yep. And now they turn, and now we will roll initiative. So let me create the turn order first. Did um, Ricky attack? So both of those guys are hurt? Yeah, Ricky attacked and yeah. missed. He rolled two. Okay, so I've got the uh. turn order up. So if you guys roll a 1d20... That will show me what your roll is. Theirs is going to be a six again. Oh my god! And we don't have a driver. Woo -wee. Oh, that's not the right one. Wow, I fucked that up in so many ways. <laughs> Cock <All> dice. Right. <laughs> oh, oh kill in the game. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There it Too is. Too bad that doesn't Natural. do anything. <laughs> Ooh, I gotta kill these guys. Gonna kill these guys. Before they can talk. Yeah. Uh, who else do we got? Oh, Quigley was a nine? Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, Troy, are you back yet? Yep, I'm on it. All right. And a seven. <laughs> Which is still... I feel your pain, man. I feel your pain. Horrible. All right, so our natural 20 initiative, Ciala gets to go first and decide what to do. I want new dice. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a I'm going to do custom dice, I think. I'm going to do uh well, I'm not going to do the same thing cuz I'm probably going to kill the guy in front of me. But uh I'm going to do uh attack with my forearm blade with the guy in front of me, who's the guy who I absolutely wrecked last line. Uh, yeah, yeah. Last time, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna attack him with a thrust. Okay. And then um, I'm going to attack him with Jim also. But if he dies, it'll just go towards the. Uh, I'll use my momentum to attack the guy in front of me. 
Okay, so let's do a... It's a difficulty three, but you, the first weapon you use is a light weapon? Yeah. So it's a difficulty two, unless you want to add anything to it, any effort? Uh, no, because this sh should, okay. in theory, okay. be easy. Sure. Difficulty two. Whew. Barely. All right. And so that one does two points of damage plus the thrust? Uh, yeah. So three points. And let's take a look at this guy. Uh, what's going on here? Um, and even if it's... I'm just moving him a second. Um, yeah, he takes the shot, and you're going to do... Yeah, he dies. So you get to say how he dies. All right. So um, he's probably still dazed, probably amazed by my awesome acrobatics there. <laughs> and after I... I'm going to say I backflipped off of the guy, and I, uh, after I thrust hit him with Jim... Who I'm calling Big Jim now. After I hit him with Big Jim, I and I land. I turn around immediately after I hear Chuck to his uh, his mumbo jumbo. And I turn around and I stab him right where his uh, his chest would be with my forearm blade. Oh yeah, it goes right uh, through. Sort of, right. yeah, sort of like a uh, alien style with the uh, the chest burster coming out. Perfect. Sort of that style with my forearm blade and. Uh, after I immediately retract that blade and he crumples to the ground, I attack with Big Jim with the guy in front of me. All right. Well, the guy in front right. of him. Um, this is okay. So can we be... take a moment here? This is let's be real. This is medium Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Oi. Oi. I like you. To, I'd like to see you say that to his face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would. Mess can I attack her. with? <laughs> This is my third kill today. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> Throwing it down. I got nothing. <laughs> uh, so now I go with Big Jim. Yep. And I slash at um, this this back guy in front of me. Okay. So, so that's difficulty my medium weapon. Three. Unless you're going to add something to it. Can I? Can I use another ability, or is that just one per turn? I believe it's one ability, yeah, per turn. One ability oh, okay. per turn. So I just adjust, uh, adjust. I attack normally with, uh, with okay. Big Jim. Yep, so, so difficulty give us a three? difficulty three. 19. Perfect. So not only do you get um, the four points, you're also going to get, you can make a choice. You can either have uh, three extra points of damage or you can have a minor effect. And I'm, Did he... and I'm. You're gonna kill oh, sorry, him if go you ahead. just take the damage. The regular damage? Yeah. All right. So I take the. He's dead. I take yeah, the uh, regular dead. damage, yeah. and I use the special effect <laughs> to uh, knock him down. So I'm assuming he still turned around. Still hasn't even looked at me. Yeah, hasn't even seen he you because he jumped over him, and then he had turned around. So as his friend is sliding, I I retract my blade from him. I use, I slam down his body with my, with my uh, leg, my opposite leg from Big Jim, and I just, oh, this poor guy, I absolutely just go, whoosh, and I try and decapitate him. Yeah, head rolls right off. <laughs> and it, and, it bounces uh, to Chuff's feet and is, <laughs> stares up at him. <laughs> and I'm assuming the blood sprays at me? The blood, it, it's like straight up and just flows everywhere. It's like a geyser. So, like a geyser. <laughs> so uh, with blood like dripping down my face, I uh, smile at uh, Quigley, who I can see straight in front of me after I just annihilated these guys in front of me. And I give her a look like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why do we have her with us? <laughs> like, she scares me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys have and um it was super quiet they there was a little bit of noise but the the dampening uh thing on your belt has kept it and you don't hear any other alarm so you guys are still up at this point i go up to chuff and i uh, i raise my hand like in a high five 
<laughs> what does Chuff do? <laughs> Cautiously raises his hand, expecting to be punked. And I had, I just give him like the most hyped high five in my life, and I'm just like, bam! Uh, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> So you right. still can hear I'm... talking from further in the cave from the other way. Oh, and while <laughs> you were here, let me, you could see this also. There. So you can see that the cave ended and there is no oh, okay. area. I was going to scoot up there. Okay, cool. I'd like to use sense power to see if there's anything in the, the boxes and bags and whatnot. Uh, okay. Give me a... Um, give me just a difficulty one. You're so good at recognizing this stuff that give me a difficulty one roll. You just say that to mock me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll it too. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Um. No. You're not getting any uh, emanations from any of the cargo. It looks like it's probably standard cargo. You're not feeling any power from anywhere in that side of the room, and nothing on those two guys either. So pretty much anything interesting would have power? Yeah, typically a cipher is going to have some type of power source for the most part. He he, he usually can detect uh, powered Numenera. Uh, 